Hello and welcome to the SAM Projects 2013 video series. In this video we'll be looking at the PowerPoint 2 video. I'll pull up a web browser and go to the SAM website and on the SAM website I will log in with the student ID. The SAM website pulls up calendar view. I want to switch to the activity list view and then making sure that always available is unselected and projects is selected. I will see a list of all the available projects. We're doing the PowerPoint 2 project at this point. Five attempts, that's great. And I say start. And I have the one, two, three steps here. One are the instruction files that we follow. Two are the start file that we'll be using and a support file, uh, and actually a uh, second file, a Word doc file, docx, uh, a JPEG image file, and a PPTX, a PowerPoint file that we'll be working with. And three is this is the link we'll use to upload our work when we're done. So let's pull these up. The instruction file first, I click on that and say open. It pulls up in Microsoft Word our instructions. If I click enable editing in the uh, yellow alert across the top, it allows me to edit the file, uh, which I don't need to edit it, but it also makes the ribbon visible and allows me to scroll through the file in a normal way. The title of this project is Preparing for a Sprint Triathlon, and we will be enhancing a presentation with visual elements. That makes sense for PowerPoint to be working with visual elements. The file name that we'll be using, our start file, is SCPPT2013C2P1A, first last name, which is automatically added, underscore one. We will save that to be first last name, underscore two. Uh, there's also the support file we were talking about, the weights.jpg file. So let's go back to our... SAM website and we can see the uh, support file underscore one. I'm going to click on it and open that file up. It'll pull up PowerPoint and give me the start file. Again, I have the yellow alert. I will say enable editing. And now I have the presentation that we're going to be editing and enhancing visually. I will say file save as and I can save this to my computer to my desktop. That's where I like to save the files and I will say underscore two. The rest of that is pre-populated and correct. Where I have big red, you have your name. So now the file is saved. I can see across the top the ribbon up here that it has the correct name, first last name, underscore two. And I can also see in the uh, comment section on the first slide, this file created specifically for first last name. Mine says big red, yours says something different. We will also need the uh, support file and uh, a second file that we'll be looking at. We'll come back and get those when we get to those steps. So going to our Word instructions, we can see that uh, our project begins with the following. On slide one, so you're thinking about doing a sprint triathlon, apply bold formatting to the title text. So slide one that has that title. So you're thinking about doing a sprint triathlon, it says to apply bold to the title text. We'll select all of that and apply bold in the home tab in the fonts group, bold. Step two, on slide two, which is currently untitled, insert word art using the fill white, comma, outline accent one, comma, glow accent one style. Enter goals as the word art text box. So on slide two, we want to enter uh, word art. So under insert, we go to the word art option, which is here in the text group of the insert tab. And we want to insert word art of a certain kind, which was, I think right here, fill white accent, uh, outline accent one, glow accent one. Make sure that's right. Fill white comma, outline accent one comma, glow accent one. So that is the word art style we're looking for is over four down two. And the text that we're supposed to enter is goals, all caps, G-O-A-L-S. Okay, so we've done step two. Step three, while slide two is still displaying, move the word art text box so that it is left, lines up with the left side of the title placeholder. And it says to do not alter the vertical placement of the word art and do not other, um, overlap other objects. What they're actually saying here is place this in the uh, um, text area, the title area, all the way to the far left. Now as I'm moving this, that's what it's supposed to look like. I can see that the left is aligned and I can see that goals uh, is replacing the title. So instead of having title text, we're using word art for the title on this slide. And when we show this, uh, the, 
the title box will be disappeared and the goals will be the only thing there. I know that this is positioned correctly because as I move it around, when it's positioned horizontally, uh, vertically where it's supposed to be, there's a little vertical line between goals and the title text in the background. And when I place it directly along the left column, I get this vertical line going up and down. So when you see the little dashed line going vertically and horizontally, you know you have goals positioned correctly. Step four, with slide two still displaying, select the text uh, 0.47MI, abbreviation for miles, and use the format painter to apply the custom formatting to 12MI and 3.1MI. So here I have this 0.47MI, so I'm selecting that, and I'm going to use the format painter to select 12MI and 3.1MI. Now I can do this by single clicking the format painter. I'm actually going to do another trick you may not know. I'm going to double click the format painter. And what that does is now I can paint and I can paint again because I, and then I have to click again to turn it off. Now if you don't want to do that double click option, if you just format painter click it once, paint the 12 and then highlight format the painter click the 3.14 but that's what you want to see when you're done is that uh, 0.47 mi highlight on the 12 miles and 3.1 miles as well step five on slide three that has the title play in your training you are to change the slide layout to be title and content so slide three over here in my navigation area slide three i want to change the layout i can see this has uh, a second window here this is not the uh, layout that I want. So if I if I right click and I get the layout option here, I can see that I happen to have two content is what's currently selected. We're changing this to be title with only one content or title and content. And it do, no longer wraps. So this first bullet doesn't wrap. It's using up the full screen space and there's no second content there on the right waiting to be uh, used. Step six says on slide number five, strength training is the title of slide five. Enter the bolted list item below in the left content placeholder, joints, muscles, tendons. So in slide number five, so I skip, skip slide four and go to slide five. In the left window, which is this one over here, I do joints, muscles, tendons. Joints, M-U-S-C-L-E-S, -E muscles, tendons. Step seven. With slide five still displayed, insert a picture file, and the picture file you get from the website, it's that support p13c2p1a underscore weights. It's the JPEG. It's the only JPEG there of the three support files on the website. Um, insert the picture available from the download on the same website into the right content placeholder. So before I can place it over here on the right, I need to get it. I want to go ahead and get it onto my machine first. And I do that by going back to my spreadsheet. Uh, back to my web browser, and under the two start files, there is the support file right here. So I'm going to click on the support file, and the operating the uh, browser says, what do you want to do? Do you want to open this? Do you want to save it? I'm going to go ahead and just do a save as. If I click on to the right of the save, I can say save as. I'm going to save it to my desktop because I know where it's at if I put it on my desktop. And uh, it's now there on my desktop for me to get. Going back to PowerPoint, this... Uh, if I want, I have the pre-built functions here for a table, a chart, smart art, and then down here on the second uh, row, the first thing is pictures. So I select pictures, and it says, where is the picture? It's in the uh, on the desktop, and there it is, support P13C2P1A weights, weights being the key thing I'm looking for there, and I have now inserted the clip art where it's supposed to go. Going back to my instructions in Microsoft Word, uh, the next step says to go to uh, slide six, endurance training, and insert an up arrow shape. That'll be the third column, the top row in the block arrow gallery. And this up arrow shape is going to be placed in the area to the right of the bulleted list, and then I'm going to resize it three inches tall and two inches wide. So slide six, I want to insert a shape, so I go under insert, and then a shape is here in the shapes group. It's in the block arrows, which is right here, third over. There's the up arrow, sure enough. 
and I just get to paint it where I want it to go. And I can paint whatever size I want. I'm about to resize it after I paint it, so I'm going to paint that. And now I want to resize it. Well, how do I resize? I can use these little handles to resize, or I can go into the Drawing Tools Format tab context menu and specify that I want it to be 3 inches up and 2 inches wide. And there I have my arrow to the right of uh, the bulleted list. Step number nine. On slide seven that has swimming gear as the title, enter the bulleted list items below in the content placeholder. Swimsuit, goggles, swim cap, and two more. So let me do those here on slide nine, seven. Swim, suit, goggles. Almost type Google because I type Google more than I type goggles, it seems like. And swim cap. And then the last two are wetsuit optional and earplugs and nose plug. So wetsuit optional. I think that may be a capital O. Let me look back. No, it's lowercase. And earplugs, and that's plural because you have two ears. Uh, and nose plug, and that's singular because most of us only have one nose optional and there we go earplugs and nose plug optional step number 10 with slide 7 still displaying which is the one we just were working on apply the picture style reflected rounded rectangle to the image so here we have this image a person swimming and on the image we want to apply uh, a style to it so when the picture is selected the picture tools format tab becomes visible clicking on the format tab I see some picture styles here that I can choose from. And there's a few right across the top I can use. If I pull a little more arrow, I can see all of my picture styles. And even as I hover over those, uh, we can kind of see what they're going to look like. And it's kind of neat that it has all those built in. The one we want is one of these fourth or fifth ones. They're up here near the top. Drop shadow rectangle, no, no. We want the reflected rounded rectangle. There it is, the fifth one across the top. So I select that. And now if I go back to my presentation, I see that it has rounded rectangles and a little bit of a reflection there across the bottom. A very neat graphic image for our presentation. Step number 11 says, on slide 8, cycling gear is the title. Adjust the sharpness of the image using sharpen 50%, which is in the fifth column, the top row, in the corrections gallery. So slide 8, adjust the sharpness of the image. So slide eight is over here, slide eight. Here's my image, and now I want to adjust the sharpness. So again, in the context picture tools format tab, on the far, far left here is the adjust group, and there's a corrections op option in the adjust group. I select the down arrow there, and I get some sharpen soften options and some brightness contrast options we want to sharpen. And that's the fifth item, I believe they said, sharper 50%, is the fifth item in that list. So I select sharper 50%, which is what we were supposed to choose. Fifth item, top row in the corrections gallery. Step number 12, on slide 10, which is titled Race Day. Enter the text below in the rectangular shape. So inside of a shape object, we're going to enter text, observe race rules, demonstrate good sportsmanship, and enjoy the race on slide 10. So slide 10, and we'll skip slide 9, come down to slide 10. There is a rectangular shape, and I want to insert text here. I can do this by right-clicking on the shape and say Edit Text. And then I can type in the text Observe Race Rules, Demonstrate Good Sportsmanship, and enjoy the race. Step 13. With slide 10 still displayed, apply a shape style of colored outline dark blue, comma, accent one. Apply that shape style to the smiley face shape. So here's my smiley face shape, and I want to do a style on this. So in the context menu, click the format tabs, and my styles are here in the style shapes area. And if I click on the show all, I will see a large list of these. And it happens to be, I believe, this very uh, you know first row, second column, uh, I mean first column top, 
second column, top row, can't say that very well, colored outline dash dark blue, comma, accent one, which is what we were looking for. So we apply that to our smiley face. On slide 11, which is, you can do it, apply a picture border using the dark blue, comma, background two color, third column, top row, in the theme colors palette. And also apply a four and a half point weight to the border. So we're going to change the picture border on the picture in slide 11 to be third column, first row. So slide 11. And right now, if you look at the picture, there's really not a border there. Or it's, it's very difficult to see. But if I select the picture and in the picture tools format tab, one of the things I can do uh, just to the right of these styles that we were just looking at earlier is I can change the border or the effects or the layout. And we're going to change the border in this case. So I select the border drop down and I'm wanting to do a uh, go back here see what it was oops it's the dark blue background two color uh, dark blue is the theme background two is the position and background two is always third column first row so background two is always this third column first row and for the selected theme background two is dark blue for this selected theme and now i have a dark blue border around my figure if i select it again I can come down here and select the weight to be a thicker weight, and now I have a four and a half point border. It's a little bit thicker, and you can see it. Step 15. With slide 11 still displaying, change the font of the title text to be Arial. So slide 11 is still displayed. Here's the title text. You can do it. And I'm going to change the font type to be Arial versus whatever it was before, I don't remember, but we're changing it to Arial because that's our instructions. Step 16, with slide 11 still displaying, enter, when you are prepared, you can do it into the notes pane. So the notes pane is down here below the, the slide itself. These are instructor notes. These are notes to yourself as you're giving your presentation. The viewer won't see those unless you let, choose to let them see those. And we want to enter when you are prepared, you can do it. When you are prepared, you can do it. And I think it was an exclamation point. It is. When you're prepared, you can do it, exclamation point, into the notes pane. So we've got that done. Step 17. Add a footer containing the slide number to all the slides except the, slide, uh, the title slide. So we are going to go under Insert. And under insert, we can do headers and footers, which is here in the text group. And I select that, pulls up a uh, dialog box, and we want to have a slide number appear on all of our slides. And we do not want it to appear on the title slide. So I say apply to all or apply. I don't think it matters. I'm going to say apply to all. And I see that there's slide number there, 11 showing on slide 11 and 10. If I look here in the right-hand corner, I see these. And hopefully the first slide does not have a slide number, and it doesn't. That's exactly what we wanted to have happen. Very good. Step 18, check the spelling in the presentation to identify and correct any spelling errors. As a hint, we should probably find and correct at least one spelling error. So hopefully when we go under the review tab for spelling so i do review spelling click this hopefully we're only going to find one error if i have more errors it's probably because i typed something wrong uh, transitions misspelled i want it to be they have the incorrect t-r-a-n-s but the correct spelling is here and i'm going to say change and take that selected value and it says there's no other spelling error so that's good i think i got what i wanted there uh, just a real quick eyeball check of what everything looks like. Let's compare that to our instructions, what everything's supposed to look like. Uh, everything seems to be there. The smiley face, the text in the box, the border on the shape there, the reflection on the window, the arrow pointing up to the right of the text, the image being in the place, the white on the goals, the goals being centered where it's supposed to be. Everything looks pretty good on a quick check. So according to our instructions, we should uh, save your changes, close the presentation, exit PowerPoint, and then upload our work. And now we submit our work for grading. I'm going to browse to the subject here in the desktop. There's my file, submit. Click the submit button. Hopefully I'll get three check marks.
get my three green check marks, so that's good. And let's go look at our results. So looking at our results, we see the score here is 100 out of 100. So we did very well with our project here.